Picture yourself soaring over West Africa in the most comfortable flight you've ever experienced. Guess what airline you're using? It's Ghana's newly dominant airline, which just became a global sensation. Or wait, let's just say we hope this really does happen. Ghana is one of the fastest growing nations in the world right now, due in part to the exceptional leadership of President Nana Akufo Addo. His government has made numerous strides at expanding development in the country, and Ghana is now growing exponentially and truly making an impact on the global stage. But there's a problem Ghana's airliner company Ghana Airways has not been operational since 2004. How is a nation without a flagged airliner supposed to lead in the 21st century and benefit from the fourth industrial revolution? To tackle this problem, the Republic of Ghana has recently announced that they plan to relaunch a national airline. But how are they going to do it exactly, and where will all that money come from? Well, that's why you have us. Think Rich Africa to help calm the noise and simply yet elaborately give you the details and all the nuances about African projects, entrepreneurship, finance, and infrastructure. So let's imagine for a second that you're a Ghanaian government official and you want to build an airliner but you know that bringing China into this is a bad idea and you don't want to have a similar fate with other gullible African countries like Kenya or Malawi. And you want to give China the middle finger and prove some African countries aren't as gullible. What do you do? Well, apparently Kenya and Malawi aren't as savvy as you are because you do what no other African country is willing to do. You take the difficult route and make risky, but highly rewarding investments in your own economy instead of falling on the lap of China and getting locked in a debt trap. This nation is truly remarkable. They took their business straight to Boeing and asked Egypt Air if they would help as well and luckily Egypt is a fan of giving China the middle finger and gladly join in on the venture. Ghana and Boeing have signed a memorandum of understanding for three Boeing 787 Dreamliners at a least price of $800 million. Boeing is the world's largest aerospace company and leading provider of commercial airplanes, defense, space and security systems, and global services. As the top U.S. exporter, the company supports commercial and government customers in more than 150 countries. Boeing employs more than 150,000 people worldwide and leverages the talents of a global supplier base. Building on a legacy of technology and innovation, deliver for its customers, and invest in its people in future growth. Ghana is set to change the aviation game in Africa. Katoka International Airport is an international airport in Accra, the capital city of Ghana. The airport is operated by Ghana Airports Company Limited, which has its offices on the airport property. It is the sole international airport in Ghana and was originally a military airport used by the British Royal Force during World War II in 1946. The facility was handed over to civilian authorities after a successful pullout by the military in response to globalization and the growing demand for air travel at the time. A development project was launched to reconfigure the structure into a terminal building in 1956. The airport occupies 1,610 acres, 651 hectares, within the city of Accra and is about 10 kilometers from the city center. The plan is for Accra Ghana's buzzing capital to be used as a hub for destinations in West Africa and future routes said to include Europe, North America and Asia with the long-term goal of opening the airline to private investments and operation. The memorandum was officially signed at the Dubai Air Show for the three Dreamliner aircrafts. Ghana's Honorable Minister of Aviation Joseph Kofi Atta has issued a statement saying he believes the growing demand for air travel to and from Ghana with the aid of these aircrafts will give Ghana an efficient and flexible means to launch a regional network and eventually serve international destinations in the future as the Boeing aircraft has an excellent reputation for its operational performance, fuel efficiency, and of course their passenger experience. Now you might be wondering why exactly Ghana lost their airliner in the first place and why we keep talking about them redeeming or revitalizing their airline. To answer this, let's take a short trip back in time about 18 years way back to July of 2004 when the United States Department of Transportation banned the airline from operating flights into or out of the United States. Whilst investigations were on the way that the airline had ignored warnings related to the grounding out-of-date aircraft, 
and that the airline had also been operating on an out-of-date license. As a result, the airline was forced to cancel two weekly flights to JFK International Airport and two weekly flights to Baltimore Washington International Airport. According to the spokesman of the USTOT, the airline had utilized an aircraft, which the Federal Aviation Administration had ordered to be grounded on flights to New York City and Baltimore on the 24th and 26th of July, respectively. The banning led to the Ghana Airways board being sacked by the government and the government taking over full control of the airline. The then Ghanaian presidential chief of staff had outlined that the measures were necessary in order to prevent further damage coming into the national airline. He also stated that the government would ensure that the airline will be turned around. The comments followed on from an incident the previous week when angry passengers took a Ghana Airways pilot hostage at Katoka International Airport after they had waited for some days for their flights on the airline. In the aftermath of the incident, President John Q. Fewer held emergency meetings with officials from the airline and police. It was reported in 2005 that Ethiopian Airlines was negotiating with the government in Accra to help keep Ghana Airways afloat in a deal that would have seen the government keeping a 25% share in the airline, with 40% being sold off to the Ethiopian Airline and Ghana International Airlines. Unable to keep up with its debt repayments and due to the government refusal to pump more money into the airline, Ghana Airways was liquidated in June 2005. In December 2008, the government released about $2.3 million to the liquidator to pay the final installment in severance claims to ex-employees of Ghana Airways. This deal brought the total amount paid out to employees of the airline to around $7 million. As mentioned earlier, the Boeing 787 is part of a family of three aircrafts that offer long ranges and unmatched fuel efficiency in the 200 to 350 seat market. The 787 can carry over 300 passengers and can fly up to 7,700 nautical miles while reducing fuel use and emissions by around 20 to 50% compared to older aircrafts. Since entering service in 2011, the 787 family has enabled the opening of more than 250 new point-to-point -point routes and saved four to five billion dollars worth of fuel. There are more than 1,600 commercial flights on the 787 Dreamliner this means that somewhere around the world a 787 Dreamliner takes off every 60 seconds, and more than 400 million passengers have flown on these planes. The chairman of Ghana Airways is Charles Werko Brobbery and technical support will be provided by Egypt here in Boeing. The Ghanaian cabinet has granted policy approval for establishing a new flag carrier with specific partner participation. Delivering his State of the Nation address on March 1, 2021, President Nana Akufo Addo made a brief mention in this regard. Egypt Air has confirmed that it has agreed to invest an initial $191 million in Ghana's new national carrier and to initially supply four unidentified aircrafts, presumably narrow bodies. The North African carrier had reportedly angled for a 70% stake in the startup. It's also important to note here that Ghana has not had a flag carrier since May of 2010 when Ghana International Airlines collapsed after the government's redrawal of funding. The flagship was owned by the Ghana government, which had a 70% stake in the venture and the U.S. consortium, which owned 30%. Katoka International Airport has been renovated and expanded to include an additional terminal. Meanwhile, President Akufo Addo said the construction of the second and third phases of Kumesi, the second phase of Kumali and the rehabilitation of Sunyani Airport were all progressing steadily. He said a decision on the siding of a proposed airport in the central and western regions was imminent. With all these advancements and following the economic chart of Ghana right now, one can really say the sky is merely their starting point. Thanks for watching this video to the end, and as always, please don't forget to subscribe and become a member of our family here at Think Rich Africa. See you in another video.